One common question I get asked a lot in Adobe Premiere Pro is understanding how to work with different size footages and sequence settings and what it means when it says clip mismatch warning. So I'm gonna quickly explain that in this video. I have two clips on the timeline and one of them is 4K and one of them is 1080p. So these are two different size clips. Maybe you're working with different cameras or different size footages and media. And there's also a couple different ways to start a new sequence. So one way to start a new sequence is by going to File, New Sequence. And here's where you can either choose a sequence preset, such as this 1080p DSLR preset. And we know the standard HD size on many streaming platforms like YouTube and Facebook is 1920 by 1080p. Or you can go to Settings and input your own custom frame size. So typically you'd want to keep it at this 16 by 9 ratio. But sometimes if you're working for social media or Instagram, you might want to do something like a square, like 1080p by 1080p, one by one ratio. Or sometimes if you're working for a vertical video format, like an Instagram story or stories, you might want to do 1080 by 1920. So in this case, it's taller than it is wide, essentially flipped vertically like so. Now, whenever you're working with a certain sequence size and you ever click a clip, so if you ever look in the info tab on the right hand side, you can see the different information about the clips. So this one here is 1920 by 1080. This one here is 4096 by 2160. That's 4K. And so you'll understand that this clip is different than the sequence size. So when I drag this clip onto the timeline at first, you'll get this warning saying, this clip does not match the sequence settings, which we know it's not a problem. It's just letting us know. And it gives us two options. Change the sequence to conform or wrap around to what the clip is, or keep the sequence as it is, kind of like the frame and the canvas, and just insert our clips in there, whether they get cropped or not. So if I click keep existing settings, because I was trying to build a Instagram story type of video, a vertical video, for example, then we do get our rectangular HD video, but it simply is just kind of in this window or in this canvas sequence. This is where you'll see letterboxing occur. There's a couple different creative solutions that you could try for this. So you can simply crop into the new frame, or you could be okay with the letterboxing or come up with some sort of creative, colorful graphics in the background, whatever you like. Um, and the same thing if I drag 4K footage in there, it's simply putting the 4K footage in this 1080 by 1920 sequence. And still we get a rectangular image inside of a vertical video. I, you can also, you know, rotate things negative 90 degrees if you did want to fill it in and just have people flip their phone or something. But the point of this video is not vertical videos. It's showing you that. Now, what if when that warning came up, I was to click change sequence settings. In this case, it'll just forget about everything that I manually set in the file new sequence settings. And it'll just make the sequence the same exact size and dimensions as that clip that I dragged in there. So this sequence now, if I ever go to sequence, sequence settings, we can see it's 1920 by 1080. It's basing the frame rate off of the sequence. And I can still change things from this point on, but we basically stretched out or wrapped the sequence around the clip dimensions. Now, what if we're working with two different size clips? So on one hand, if I drag 4K footage into a 1080p sequence, you'll see that it's just kind of cropped in. So this clip, in, I'll put it over so you can see. This clip in full size is like this big, but in reality we have this much of the clip actually existing. So you can just do something simple like scale down. Scaling down, you never really lose quality scaling down. But what if it was the reverse? What if we had a 4K clip and a 4K size sequence and we dragged a 1080p clip in there? You'll see the 1080p clip, even at 100% scale, is kind of too small for this 4K frame. 
In this case, you could, again, come up with a creative solution, or if you don't mind the slight quality loss, you could simply scale it up. One trick to scale it up is by right-clicking and choosing set to frame size, and you'll see that'll scale the edges to match. But in this case, the dimensions still aren't in perfect ratio, so you would have letterboxing on the sides, or you can simply scale it up even a little bit further. So, you know, if it's for something for social media or it's not really the end of the world, if there's a tiny bit of quality loss, to be honest, as long as you're making it work. But the final th question and point to address is, you know, what is the end size that you want it to be in the first place? Uh, this is kind of like starting with the end in mind, and there's no specific right answer. Typically, just a standard 1920 by 1080p standard HD is the standard. Um, you don't really, unless you want to be uploading in 4K, you know, as of now, a lot of things still, especially if you're playing on a phone, you know, 4K resolution is really large in file size and sort of negligible in viewing experience, so to speak. Um, but it's really up to you on what you want the final video to be delivered in. And that's, that is what would influence your decision on how you make your sequence size and settings. So if you wanted it to be 4K, then you would have a 4K sequence and fit and stretch all the clips in as they need to be. And this goes even back to how you shoot it. You'd want to always begin with the end in mind. So shoot in 4K if you want to finish in 4K. And also when you finally come time to export, so file export media. This is also where you'd want to start with the end in mind. Here, if you choose match source, it'll match your sequence settings here. Um, but you also have all these presets such as YouTube 4K or YouTube 1080p. And you see it's adding some black bars because the ratios were not exactly the same between this 4K and the standard YouTube tenant ratio 4k ultimately when you export it's going to wrap your final video in the size that you exported in so even if i chose to ultimately make it a vertical video again you see here i changed that and it just letterboxes everything so and even when you upload it to certain players like youtube and whatnot they're also going to compress and and change things a little bit to fit their standards. So in general, I just kind of stick with these presets here. They're all nice presets there. So if you start with a preset sequence size, you make all your clips fit in them, and then you export it all smoothly. It won't be like putting a square peg through a round hole. It will be like putting a round peg through a round hole and make your life easier. So this is, can get complicated, but hopefully I've giving you a basic idea of all of these different aspects from starting sequences to working with different clip sizes to ultimately exporting. If you have any specific questions, let me know in the comments. I know it can be confusing, but that is a quick run through on understanding sequence settings and sizes and working with different clip mismatches. If you enjoyed this video, my name is Justin Odisho. You can check out a bunch of other helpful tutorials on relevant similar topics and more on the playlist in my channel and subscribe to stay tuned for all of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.